All right, here we go. Chapter 4, Section 3, Congruent Triangles. We just look at keywords here. Obviously, uh, we're, we're dealing with triangles in this chapter. And now we want to see what can make two triangles congruent. So there are um, there is one statement that has two qualifications. And the statement is this. Two triangles, or let's just say triangles... are congruent if and only if their corresponding sides, their corresponding parts are equal. Okay, so I'll clean that clean that up just a little bit. Triangles are congruent if and only if their corresponding parts are equal. So we've already studied in the first two sections of chapter four the parts of a triangle. We have the sides and we have the angles. Okay, so the two parts are the sides sides and the angles. Let's see what it'll do with this one. Okay, so sides and angles. So there are two ways the book can show you that they're congruent. They can give you the angles or the lengths of the sides or they'll put the little markings on them. So let's go ahead and look at a couple of examples. Okay, so let's look at an example. I've got triangle ABC and I've got triangle DEF. Okay, so let's go ahead and write those up here. Triangle ABC and triangle DEF. Some things they might do. They might say that is equal to that. And then they could tell you that angle A is 35 and angle D is 35 and angle C is 45 and angle F is 45. So we automatically know that these are congruent so far just according to their angles. Now, we would also need to know the sides. So they could go with the little side marks. Or they could actually give you the values. I'm going to look at side marks right there. So I could tell that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF because I've got congruent sides or congruent corresponding sides and congruent corresponding angles. Now, crucial, the order is important when you label these. You can put this, this is good. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Why? Because in order, A corresponds to angle D. Those are the two ones that are equal. B corresponds to angle E. And then at the end, C corresponds to F. Okay, you could not write it this way. It has to be very specific. Let's say that you wrote angle ABC there, but then you decided to go F D, E for some reason. Okay, this is absolutely incorrect and not good. Order is important. So let's look at some application problems to find some missing 
uh, missing angles or sides. Okay, before we look for some actual values, let's look at one example here. And let's see if we can prove that these two triangles are congruent. So let's go with A, triangle ACB. And let's put the order. I know that um, the congruent angle is angle E. And then I know that I'm going to go EDB um, because ED and AC would be the congruent sides, so they need to be first in the triangle. Let's see if we have enough. Obviously, we have all three sides, corresponding sides are congruent. Do we have all three corresponding angles? I notice that they've given me one set of angles that are equal. Angle A and angle E are congruent. Now, by knowing relationships of things that we have already learned, I also know that these two angles are congruent because of vertical angles. And so if I have two angles of a triangle that are equal to each other, obviously if I subtracted them from 180, if I had actual values, I know the third one has to be the same. So angle C is congruent to angle D. And then we can label the other ones. We have to label them a little bit different. That would be ABC is congruent to EBD. And that would be because of vertical angles. So I do know that these two triangles are congruent by that given information. So now let's look at one problem and find the actual, find some actual values. Okay, here we go. Well, let me scroll that up a little bit so we can see the whole problem. I'm going to tell you that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. By looking at that, that tells you angle A is congruent to D, angle B is congruent to E, and angle C is congruent to angle F. What I'm going to ask you to find is X and Y. I will tell you that one of the missing sides is 2Y plus X, so we're going to have to find Y first, so we're going to put that on the back burner for now. Let's take that 8Y minus 5. 8Y minus 5 is what angle E is. You'll notice again that angle E should be the same as angle B because they are in order. So if I know what angle B is, which I do, it's 99, then I have 8y minus 5 equals 99. So a little multi-step algebra 1 here, add 5 to both sides. So we get 8y equals uh, 104. Divide both sides by 8, and y equals 13. So I go back up here, and y is 13. So now I can use that in the second one. I'm going to use 2y plus x, and I need to know what side that's equal to. Okay, so going back to my original one, DE, that's the first two on the right-hand side, is going to be equal to AB. So I go over to AB, and I see that that is 38.4. I substitute what I already know. I know Y is 13, so that's going to be 2 times 13 plus Y, or plus X, excuse me, equals 38.4. So that gives me x plus 26 equals 38.4. Polish this off by subtracting 26 from both sides. And that gives me x equals 12.4. Now I could go back in, substitute those in, 
um, if I took 8y or 8 times 13 minus 5, that should give me a value of 99, which it does. Okay. Um, and just real quick to do that, 8 times 13, I'm going to do that over here to the side, is 104. 104 minus 5 is going to give you that 99. So everything checks. Okay. So that's chapter 4-3, congruent triangles, about 10 and a half minutes.